What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Alpha Girl Confidence Podcast. I'm your host, Shay Haddo. And on today's episode, I had the pleasure of sitting down with the biggest hearted, kind, amazing human beings that I've ever met, Christy Smith Ryan, who is the strength and conditioning coach at Central Catholic High School in Portland, Oregon. So I'll tell you the story in the episode a little bit about how uh, her and I met last year, but I want to read you her actual bio because it's so incredible. Um, So Christy attended the University of Akron in Ohio, where she broke every record in track and field in which she competed, winning 11 Mid-American Conference titles and earning All-Mac honors seven times. She was proud to become Akron's first multiple All-American, receiving that honor four times. In 2000, she became Akron's first NCAA Division I champion as a heptathlete and their first athlete to qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials. All right, and get this. In 2012, she was voted the greatest female athlete of all time by the university, and she currently is uh, has a seven-time track and field Hall of Fame inductee. Seven-time inductee into the Hall of Fame. So incredible, incredible athlete, as you can see, an even more incredible human being. So if you're a parent, a coach, an athlete, or none of those things, this episode is still going to be so valuable. If you're human, listen to this episode. Um, so in this conversation, we talked about the mindset and perspective that really helped her as a youth athlete to be confident and to achieve all of the greatness that she achieved. Um, we talked about the biggest lessons that she tries to impart on her athletes that she works with at the high school. Uh, We talked about things that parents and coaches can do to help girl athletes stay in sports and not just stay in sports, but actually thrive in their sport. And we talked about the importance of being grounded, filling up your cup and having that, you know, filled cup so that you can bring that energy and serve other people around you. So those are just some of the things that we talked about. We covered a lot in this conversation. We went deep. I know you're going to enjoy it. So make sure you clear all of your distractions, open your heart, and let this episode change your life. All right. Enjoy it. What's up, Christy? Welcome to the Alpha Real Confidence Podcast. Super excited to have you on for my own selfish reasons, like I told you, but also to just, you know, you have so much wisdom and your energy is one of the most amazing energies I've ever been around. So I'm excited to have you on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, you being here and thanks for the invite. Yeah. So I'll give everyone just a quick uh, background of how we met. So it was almost a year ago. Exactly. Right. So it was September of uh, 2022. I went to Portland, Oregon, uh, Central Catholic High School to do a kind of like a a workshop for the coaches and all the female athletes. And you were one of the first people that I met. And I immediately like loved you, like immediately. (laughs) I was like, she is so cool. We immediately connected and I went to go check out the weight room. So I got to see your space in the weight room. Um, And we just, you know, I've been wanting to foster and cultivate our relationship. So that's how we met. Um, And I would love to hear from you and share with the audience a little bit about your um, athletic background. Feel free to go as deep as you want and then kind (laughs) of how that led you to doing what you're doing today. Yeah. Well, Shay, again, thanks for having me. Um, I'll accept any invite uh, you'll give (laughs) me. So (laughs) for future reference. (laughs) Yeah, there we go. I, um, you know, in many ways, I think that's why I've been fighting to be a teacher for so long. A teacher, I think. She, a teacher got me involved in like the sixth grade uh, in track and field. And, 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 and what was interesting about that, I always tell the most interesting stories, is that it was a field day as we start uh, in, in most elementary schools. You have some sort of activity day around some sort of track and field events. And, and, and I was doing the standing long jump. And she said when I jumped, she, she saw me in a big stadium. Oh, cool. And so, you know, she was able to get me sponsors and, and get me on a local club team. Uh, at a very young age. And and that was really it. I just really took um, athletics very seriously. Um, I call myself, I I was a victim of positive coaches. um, And (laughs) and that really kind of helped me just nurture my my mindset from a very early age. I was, I'm a twin. Um, So I think through that came a lot of competitive rivalry and, um, you know, we just made each other better. You know, in high school, I was able to, you know, break a lot of records. Um, I was a two-sport athlete, basketball and track, but just fell in love with track. Got an opportunity at the University of Akron. 
uh, ran successfully there and then got a chance to compete um, for the U.S. Um, in 2000, finished 10th at the Olympic trials as a heptathlete. No big deal. Uh, no big deal. Um, <laughs> onward and, and so forth after seven, um, you know, hall, hall of Fames later, track and field Hall of Fames. Just, you know, no, I'm from a, I'm from a state that recognizes its athletes. So that's <laughs> yeah. good. Um, but I think, you know, through all of that, you know, it was, it was, I was blessed to get into collegiate coaching, track and field coaching very early in my life. Actually, the day that I got invited to interview for Ohio University, um, I also was receiving my permanent substitute teaching assignment for PE and health. Um, so I was like, hey, let me go see what the college coaching was about. Um, yeah. Then you fast forward 12 years later, you know, you know, four different universities, you know, I still have not been able to be a PE teacher and just got a chance to be a fly on the wall at the University of Oregon. I had an athlete at the Olympic trials, a high jumper, Jeffrey Heron. And and I just, uh, I recognized that strength and conditioning was something that um, really was probably the most paramount to athletic development, especially being a heptathlete. For sure. Um, and so, you know, I um, asked the question, you know, I asked Coach Jimmy Radcliffe if I, if I could come out and see what he, he, he does. Um, I really like to, you know, get my credential and get my CSCS. And he said, Chris, you can come anytime. So literally, I moved my family to Eugene, Oregon from the University of Iowa. Um, and that was pretty much it. I eventually found Central Catholic and... Um, you know, head track and field coach there for many years, and they opened up the strength and conditioning role and finally got a chance to throw my hat yeah. into the ring and, you know, bring a um, full set of disciplinary um, strength and conditioning compared with, you know, the foundationary elements you get in track and field. And that was it. So I'm entering yeah. in my third year. Third year. So you work with you work with all the teams, men and women's, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, what is two part question? What's the hardest part? And then what's your favorite part of that? Oh, I think the hardest part for me is still the maturity level. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, you know, when it comes to movement, you know, you really have to um, sometimes be mindful. Um you know, of the age, but also coach them up, you know, um, and this is where we kind of get into the no judgment zone, creating positive spaces, um, conduct, attention, um, you know, feeling blessed and very capable, right? So like, um, so I think for me is um, just helping them understand that, yeah, in here, you're going to have to raise your maturity level up. I know fellowship is big and I want you to connect. Because um, especially being in a high school setting, you know, there, 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 there are these rules where we got to really be our best <laughs> listeners and students. But in my space, movement is really important. And sometimes, you're, you know, the, the, in order to move and turn on the brain, so does the mouth need, you know. So yeah. it's just, um, you know, the maturity level. And I think the for me, the best part is just seeing our students grow that confidence through strength. Um, I tell you, you just put on one layer of muscle. And I mean, I think they just, you know, they take it to the moon. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, they just feel so good about themselves. And, it, and it's transcendent, right? Yeah. Because once you start gaining confidence and understanding how to gain confidence in one area, sometimes these other areas become easy. Um, as we, you know, work with, you know, individual skill sets. Uh, because, you know, how we conduct business is how we conduct business. It's no different being in the weight room, <laughs> right? Um, and, and, and in and out with our friends and personal lives and this and that. And, you know, these things are. And so when you're dealing with high school level, um, you know, minds and bodies, they're just they're just sponges. And it's just such a just a, it's such a Goldilocks time developmentally that I just I like go off in my mind. I'm always like. If, if I could go back in time and be the, like, and be this person for me, what would I have wanted? How would I have wanted to do it? I, that's why I just, uh, I just like to get in there and just give them all the energy and love of the world and just let them know they can do it. So, yeah. And that's like the coolest thing. Like when I was there, I could just see from the get go, like how much they loved you and respected uh -oh. you. And that's like, so goes to say like, 
how much you put in to these kids. Like I know you work your butt off in there, right? Like <laughs> oh yeah, it's more than a full time job. Um, and mm -hmm. so it's just cool to see that um, you know what you put into those kids is is what you're going to get out, and mm -hmm. it's just it's just cool to see that. Um, and so I, I want I want to backtrack a little bit because um, sure. as I was doing my research. And I watched a video and I found this out and I want to hear a little bit more about it. So your mom is, um, yeah. had polio, correct? Yeah. And was a quadriplegic. She was, she was. And then, um, so she developed polio at the age of three. Yeah. Um, and so was, I don't, I, I'm not sure, but the treatment back in the day, like she was in an iron lung for several years. Wow. Meaning she was trapped literally in an yeah. iron box to breathe with, with a window. Um, and then she actually learned to walk by 18. Oh, wow. Right. That's incredible. Rehabilitation. I mean, this was her full-time job. You know, this was not an educated woman. She, there was no time, you know, you know, when you're, um, when you're dealing with something so big, uh, you know, as walking, you know, and, and through limited mobility, I mean, she learned how to walk. Um, and for me that, 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 that is, um, I, I, I'll always carry that with me. Um, yeah. and no, you know, and I, and I actually have it on every script, you know, just, you know, you're, you're very capable. Um, mm -hmm. and so, you know, if you can, use your feet and your two hands at the end of the day, there's, there's literally nothing that you can't do in the world. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, you know. that's what, I mean, you kind of just, I think maybe answered the question I was going to ask around that is like, what kind of perspective did that give you just on life? Man. Well, it just, it allowed me in the toughest moments, whether it was competing or coaching or life, it allows you, it, it, it it's a safety net. Right. Because, and this is why I wear, you know, shoestrings, mm. you know, tennis shoestrings around my hair, you know, and just to always have these physical reminders that, you know, I do have a lace, yeah. you know, I'm not, I didn't always have shoes. <laughs> yeah. I had laces, you know, I've got laces, I've got laces now, you know, I've got shoes now. Like just remember what's really important and being grounded for me. Uh, maybe it's my Piscinian background, but being grounded for me is one of the most important things. I just come from a very strong family. Yeah. And sometimes when, you know, you gotta, you always have to, you know, pull on something way bigger than yourself to succeed in life, especially as a, 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 a brown girl in this lifetime, like you, you, you really have to learn how to ground yourself and pull from that because I, I don't have a poker face. Yeah. Yeah. Like I can't get away with not having my cup 100, right? Mm -hmm. If my cup's not 100, then I kind of dismiss myself, you know, take a day off time for self care because students pick up on that. People around me pick up on that. Yeah. And I just like to, you know, I like to be a light source um, for everyone around yeah. me. Um, and I just don't have time for people, things, nude. I, I can't let people, you know, not, I cannot ever be 100. I don't know if that yeah. makes no, sense. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> I love, I love that you brought that up. And for you, like, how do you, when, let's say your cup isn't at a hundred. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you said like, you'll take a day off, stuff like that, but how else do you like fill up that cup? Yeah. So Family time, running, you know, in Oregon, we're just so blessed with the beauty of nature. Yeah. I mean, it's as simple as for me getting to water, yep. taking a day to just, you know, whether it's a salt soak or, you know, as simple as do, doing my nails, yep. um, takes some time off with my pups. Um, who are running around? <laughs> I have mine yeah. under my desk too. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> they love me being home right now. <laughs> um, but I think it's just also my hardest thing because taking that time off is hard. Yeah, right. Right now, it's like as we're building this role at school, it's just it's it's hard for me to to take that time off. But when I know I need it, I just kind of have to pull that trigger, and there is space for that. Um, and I don't know if that's because I'm a, <laughs> a Gen Xer or not, you know, but you know, it's just, you know, we're yeah. grind time, we're grind time, we're going to grind it, 
Uh, that's so true. Done. Yeah. And, and okay. So that's what you do. What do you like, make sure that you don't do to fill up your cup? Like when you're needing that, like, what do you avoid? What do you stay away from? Oh, so I'm not a news watcher. Um, me too. <laughs> it's just, it offers me nothing. It, it really offers me nothing that I cannot get from. I love investing locally, <laughs> not only with my money, my time, my presence, um, you know, just I am a classic Midwest girl. <laughs> like I'm from Ohio. So I say hi when I walk past someone like I am, you know, in my moments. And it's just, I, you know, and I don't know, you know, many folks know this, but you ever, you know, have a person of color and they're always saying hi to they're making sure they say hi to black people. Do you, do you know about this? Do you know about this? Uh, a little bit, but go ahead. Yeah, and about you should it, know. Yeah. You should know. Like just out of respect, right? Because you know, um, we haven't, you know, as a, as a brown person, we haven't always had the easiest time in life. But one of the most inherent things that I grew up with, and that I have always e even tried to educate my students on, is you. We say hi to each other as a way of checking in. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you doing today? You know, yes, sir. No, sir. you know, hi, how are you doing today? It's it's a way of going, hey, I recognize you. I want to know that you're okay. I got you, sis. What's up? And, and it's all these things that are hidden amongst, you know, like, like black people, you know, because right, sometimes right. like things aren't always safe and things aren't always, yeah. but that recognition is important. And so like, for me, it's like, I have to make sure that I, am really existing <laughs> in and around my space and that um and not showing up is something that i just i i really try to avoid like you know even if i'm at a 10 percent day right even if i'm on vacation right i'm, I'm gonna make time for shay i'm gonna make time <laughs> you know that's really important um and so just those those kind of things too is you know just you know, making sure that I'm I'm always uncomfortable, but when I'm when things are really hard, I'm I'm taking time out to really exist in 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 my environment as as well as I can, and that really fills the coffers. Yeah, I mean, and that takes so much awareness to know, like I'm at a ten percent day, or I'm good, I'm at a hundred, and I think most people just don't even have the self awareness to know, and then they go out and engage with the world in a way that's not their best or they're snippy or they're mean. It's like, I think just bringing that awareness to how are you feeling today and then taking the steps, you know, to either take time off or fill that cup back up so you can interact with the world in the way you want. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I would always, I would always, and I would always say that I'm <laughs> very empathic. Yeah. So, yeah. and I think that allows me to be a very good coach too. Mm -hmm. Um, because I can, I like, I can pick up on energy as well as I can give it out. Um, so it's, you know, when I'm checking, connecting with my students, it's like, I really want to like, kind of own that. It's, it's a big basket to have. Um, and, you know, I'm getting to the point where, you know, my, you know, son doesn't, you know, set and fall if I have a bad day, you know, I really wake up and get it going that next morning that next morning reset is like so cherished um yeah. in my world you know be able to just wake up and do it again and be thankful yeah. and grateful for all the students and wonderful people in my life i love it i love it so i, I want to ask you a little bit about your um your athletic as a youth like be <laughs> doing all of the things you did the accomplishments like hall of fame times seven times seven right yeah. Okay. It's time seven. I barely have enough fingers for that one. Um, <laughs> did you ever struggle with like confidence or motivation um, as like a youth athlete? Looking back, it was a no. Um, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. I was very protected, meaning whether it was like my sister, yeah. like where I fell short, my sister helped me. Mm, yeah. So, for example, um, she didn't make the sixth grade basketball team. And this is a young lady that went on to play collegiate basketball oh, wow. at the University <laughs> of Dayton, right? No way. Um, wow, that's cool. And we spent a full year just working, 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 working. And 
and she eventually made varsity and went on and, you know, got her scholarly and everything and, and became, a, and actually had a shot at the WNBA. Like, wow. um, but it was, you know, we always, you know, really work together on that. And there's, there's a protection in that. Yeah. My coaches let me compete with the boys. Mm-hmm. So my very first uh, coach ever in life, um, gosh, he, he is the most positive, uh, Mr. Curtis Stitts. And he was the most positive person that I could have ever been in contact with. And all the coaches were. Like, yeah. I, I just, I look back and I'm like, wow, did I just, thank you. What a blessing. Right. Mm-hmm. But he let me compete with a guy. So I didn't grow up thinking I couldn't ever do anything. And I think track and field is such a nurturing sport. There's so much you can do. Um that you run and jump and so true. So, yeah. and so like I just never really lacked or thought myself uh, in athletics right yeah. and then you know you get to the classroom I'm like hey <laughs> math skills how do I translate this like how do I and so you eventually kind of pull from that confidence uh, a little bit. It's like, yeah. Oh, I just treat it like a track race. The gun's off. Okay. Go. <laughs> That's anxiety. We're, I don't have time for you. You know, so I'm like, learn some coping skills. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, just, so long answer, but, you know, I, looking back, it was like I grew up in, in such a wonderful family and time and moment, even though there was a lot of adversity, for sure. you know, I am really thankful for the road that I, I took. Yeah. And I mean, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I see kind of two big things there. Number one is the support that you had from coaches, from family, maybe from the community. And then mm-hmm. also, uh, which you didn't really say this, but maybe the perspective of just gratitude based on seeing, you know, your mom and like you saying, like, I'm grateful that I have, you know, two legs and two arms and I can go out and do things. Do you think that attitude of gratitude is part of it? Like why? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That mindset. You know, I think, you know, I remember my sixth grade teacher. She said, you know, make sure you count your blessings. And I grew up Methodist in a church called, you know, Sunday school. Yeah. Church bus with grandma, (laughs) you know, like you know, work at soup kitchens, like understanding that, hey, we didn't have a lot, but we, we certainly have more than a lot. <laughs> so, um, right. and I think those experiences really are defining moments and, yeah. um, and creating those, um, continue to create those for myself and my students are, are, I think are really important because, you know, we all see from some place, but helping to interpret those opportunities um, in those spaces. And I don't even tell like, you know, families and anybody who will listen, I'm like, hey, remember, you know, this planet has been here for billions of years. Billions, billions, right? Like the fact that we're sitting here together. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. That, you know, like it's cosmic. I hate to get, you know. No, no, I love it. I love walking, it. But I just think like, you know, you don't understand that every time we walk past someone or you know, your energy, your skin cells in my weight room, like that you are, you are putting the energy in the space. Like this is meant to happen. Um, and what, what, what can we gain and, and feel better about these moments? Um, you know, that we could take into tomorrow, be yeah. better people and help each other out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds like, so, uh, I don't know, cliche maybe, but really like, if you have that perspective of like, man, what had to happen for us, me and you to even be having this conversation? Like, it's like, it's just being so grateful for the little things in life. Like when I go on my walk and I see the sun hitting a tree a certain way, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is so cool. You know what I mean? It's just like, I think those little things, because then you kind of step out of your own, like, little world and your own kind of negative thoughts and you can yes. when you zoom out and kind of see the bigger picture you're like this is really cool uh, my problems are actually so bad i'm actually really grateful for what i have you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah and just like and being in your moments like right like you at that moment your focus could have been on anything on that wall yeah right but the fact that you recognize that moment that particular moment i think signifies things right and so when you're dealing with people, no matter if you're, you know, a student or faculty member or anybody, you know, just in line for coffee. Like, I just think like <laughs> they're just 
common things that I have grown up. Maybe it's home training, but you know, be kind, <laughs> with a smile. <laughs> like, um, they're they're simple. You know, I, I hate to use the word the kiss principle, but yeah, sometimes we forget in our busy lives and in 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 all the things that we can learn and all the information that's coming our way, we forget sometimes to just. Stop and be simple. Like, don't feel like you got to <laughs> recreate the wheel. Like, just, yeah. you know, fundamentals yeah. at the end of the day, doing simple things extraordinarily well. And working, right? Because we have a whole generation that has to work on their awkwardness. Like, you know, COVID didn't do us any favors. And, you know, some of our kids have been kind of stuck uh, into opportunities where they don't have a chance to really be vulnerable <laughs> and talk through things. Because yeah. I find this generation <laughs> is very quiet. They're very quiet. They like to hold things in. Our generation, we talk. Yeah, so we got the mind pop, baby. Hey. But, you know, we're our generation's raising kids now. And so for as loud as we can be, I think it's the opposite, right? They're quiet. They're holding on to things. And so I'm like, what are you doing? So helping them understand, hey, okay, here's an onion. These are the layers. But at the core, what is that? What is what 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 is that? You know, what is that goal setting? What is that? Where, 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 mm-hmm. where are we, how, 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 where do you want to go? Where do you want to do? Let's help you that. achieve that, you know? Um, this brings up, you know, a good point. Like, like obviously school is going to be starting in the next three weeks to a month for a lot of kids and you're around them all the time. Yes. So you might be a great person to ask. Cause I know, uh, with the girls I work with and it's just in general, like it can be a scary time. How do I make new friends? You know, like I'm nervous about opening my locker, like just so many things to be nervous about and a little bit anxious about, especially in terms of the social side of being awkward and stuff like that. Uh, what advice do you have for kids kind of going into a, a new school year, uh, specifically on kind of like the social side of things? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Take your time. Sometimes, you know, when that fear response is elicited, like number one, you have to recognize what's happening, right? You know, it's in that uncomfortable zone, recognize. And then I say assess, like you have to assess your decisions um, and in your moments, I've got to find my locker, focus on that, right? You know, walking with your, you know, shoulders apart, your head up, recognize what's around you you know, really focus in on that locker. Did you get it? Yes. That's a, that's a check mark, baby. You know <laughs> what I mean? Getting that locker set, getting yourself going. Okay. Now my, my next class, I think sometimes we get so inundated about looks and where we are in space. Yes. Those things are important, but sometimes they get in the way of the overall big goal. Getting to that locker, unlocking that lock, grabbing your textbook, being on time, getting your seat. Like priorities, right? Yeah. Also, I think it's really important to set up a time for your homies. Like plan your time. Like, they're, 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 you know, like, and if it doesn't go to plan, that's okay. Like sometimes it's good to have like distractions. These are myths to be in your life sometimes you know we think we're on this yellow brick road but that road has many different you know um ways to go so sometimes i think you know like i said be vulnerable be responsive be a positive person um and really try to uh just the biggest piece of advice i would give students is to just really recognize what's happening assess, make a decision, and then go for it. Like, just go that's, for it. You know like, that, you that's the hell pull the trigger. You just yes. spelled RAM. Recognize, assess, oh. make a decision. Is that oh, a okay. coincidence? Sweet. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So RAM, recognize, yeah. assess, make a decision. I love that you said, like, to start out, like, take your time. I need to use that. I need to, I need need to be to taking it you got to put that in your weight room. It's like, for real. you're cause I was, a, I was a Ram in uh, college too, for when I went to Virginia. And so I, I like Rams mm-hmm. and you guys are Rams. Yeah. Um, Thanks. There we go. Good job. I'm glad that I, I pulled that out for you. For so you're, you're welcome and thank you. <laughs> 
Um, but I like how you said, take your time because so much it's like, oh, I have to go make friends immediately and I have to find my class and I have to get good grades and I have to look good. And it's like all these things, it's like, can we just start out with the one thing? Yeah. And we just like one thing, can we go to the locker, unlock the locker, get the book, go to like one thing at a time. And that uh, eliminates any of this unnecessary, like future anxiety that we all have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> no, really. Like I, um, I take years and I work on, uh, like concepts with myself. So, mm -hmm. um, taking my time was, um, a goal that I had about two seasons ago. So that was, excuse me, last year was, um, I'm going to take my time with this. I'm going to take my time with this role. Um, I will not be rushed mm -hmm. uh, because I know that the job that I'm doing is something of quality, right? Yeah. And it's in my scope of practice. So there's not anything that I can't do with the amount of time that I need to do it. Um, and I'm okay with that. Like doubting was a big one. I think I learned a lot from because you don't sometimes you don't recognize things in yourself um that are blockers you know we're sometimes our our own blockers right yeah. mm -hmm. um i would say the the most of the time um and so i recognize that doubting was something that really kind of got in my way of success like i even doubted myself with this role yeah because yeah. how could i not be a track coach like i literally on the 11th hour applied for the job <sighs> Dang. i was like no i can't i can't i can't oh Okay, but this is like my dream now, you know, like, and then, and you then the job description off you. came out. Yeah, the job yeah. description came out. I was like, oh, gosh, I can really check these boxes, though, you know, mm -hmm. so. I'm, I'm yeah. glad you brought that up, because I think a lot of times people think like, oh, if I'm confident, then I don't have doubt, like confident people and mm -hmm. don't have doubt. And it's like, we're, we all have doubt. Oh yeah. Like, doubt is going to come up. Um, what would you say? Like, how, how have you moved through those, those different doubts that have come up in your life? Mm -hmm. I always go back to my goal. What's the, what, 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 what is it that I got to achieve? Because yeah. am I doubting because I'm fearful? Cause sometimes fear is just a big protector, you know, like, yeah. you said, like, like our bodies, like, well, you know, like <laughs> yeah. even when, you know, all my, you know, morning runs, like my mind's like, I get, I'm like, but you can, you know, <laughs> like you just kind of have to kind of channel your heart or your legs and listen to other things until that, you know, goes away. And that yeah. positive self-talk is really big. Um, but yeah, I just think you have to figure out, at the end of the day, um, by doing this, is it going to help me reach my goal? Right. And I am a pit bull for results. Like I, I will grind, 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 grind. I have laser focus. Right. Yeah. And so if it's not, then I can kind of go the other way, but 10 times out of 10, Shay, it's like something really goofy. <laughs> like really goofy you know it could you know and it's always like oh my hair isn't right I'm like oh I'm on vacation should I take out my my glass beads I'm like nah I'm on vacation like I, you know like I'm just gonna show up I will put on my type I will put on my polo represent you know <laughs> and that's gonna uh, you know like I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. go into the office right like sometimes like I and I have to remember I don't have to be perfect I don't mm -hmm have to be perfect too because that i think sometimes gets in the way oh yeah i think and i'm not you know how it is is how it is and i know like that effort for me just like in many of the uh lessons you will teach you know it's like we're looking at that effort at the end of the day and if my effort is in there um and i'm having something then you know what i gave it my all go to bed wake up get to do it again. Yeah. Be proud of yourself. That's yeah. That's the thing. We talked about perfectionism on one of my recent calls with my girls. And you said like, like, Hey, you can, you can not be perfect. So like giving yourself permission to not be perfect. Um, and then, yeah, that's the thing is like, at the end of the day, like, what can you control? Like come back to those controllables. I can control my effort and my attitude, you know what I mean? Yeah. And your, your kindness and like that kind of stuff. And if you can do those things, 
you could go to bed and sleep like a baby. That's right. right. Yes. I don't have any problems sleeping. <laughs> Me neither. It's because <laughs> we focus on the controllables mm -hmm. most of the time. I still got to work on it sometimes too. Um, okay. Yeah. So I, I, I want to get your take on something. So as we know, like a lot of girl athletes quit their sports around like what age 13, 14, you know, like that, that age, it can be like a really tough age. I know it was a very awkward age for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but what do you think is like some of the reasons why that's such a big age, why so many girls start quitting the sport? Yeah. Well, I think with all students, we need the support system, right? <clears throat> yeah. I have my coach. Um, I felt like I could thrive, you know, having that sense of finding your tribe belonging. Mm -hmm. I think with a certain population, um, you know, like I think in terms of coaching, like a coach never lose sight of their top end. I think where it gets watered down is that in between sub varsity things get a little mm -hmm. watered down. Mm -hmm. I think girls just don't have an opportunity to make meaningful connections. Mm -hmm. I don't think that um, they've been extended memorable moments, mm -hmm. right? Defining moments. Um, you know, I remember going to some of these track meets and going, oh my gosh, I'm at Kent State University. I can see myself here, right? right? And Kent State ended yeah. up being one of those schools that I actually coach for, like, right. you know, ascending and, and seeing yourself in it. So I think we assume that students are having a good time and doing all this, but like my coach took the time to take us not just on the national track campus and track facilities and all that, but he made time to take us on a college tour, connecting meaningful moments. Like how, how can you, for example, my college coach took me to a national competition in Eugene, you know, Hayward Field, but then he took us time, took the time to take us to Florence, Oregon. And that was the first beach I ever step foot on wow and so where do i live <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, like right, i think sometimes right. you don't understand the seeds that you plant uh and creating these moments and i don't think we do that enough because we don't take care of our most vulnerable <laughs> i think literally people don't know who that women are vulnerable I do. I, 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 and I'm naive. I, I really think we live in a time where people don't feel uncomfortable in their spaces. Right. So I think it's sometimes hard to relate. Mm -hmm. It's hard to have empathy. It's, it's implied. Right. But I think people and coaches and parents, we all need to look at what moments are being created. I love that. And because it can be many and vast, right? But if they're not meaningful, um, you know, yeah. you're going to lose, you're going to lose, you're going to lose a lot. Um, because girls, we like to do it together. Like, I just want to say I was protected. I had a twin, like we, ooh, like there was nothing we can do. You know, like I grew up like that, like that, that cancer mentality, yeah. like I can do it all. <laughs> I love that. It's like, so for me, um, thinking back on it, obviously I almost quit because I wasn't confident and just like that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason that I didn't quit and that I stayed 100% was because of my team and the relationships that I built. Like they were my best friends. They were like the only friends that I, that I had. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I've never thought about it that way, but I think that's what kept me in it mm -hmm. is just the relationships and looking back on my athletic experience, it mm -hmm. wasn't the actual like playing that I enjoyed the most. It was the relationships, the going out to eat, the yeah. going and hanging out and yes. making a fool and like doing that kind of stuff is. And so I think, especially with girls, it's like the relationships matter so much. Well, yeah. And sometimes I don't think we... Like, I like to, I always like to use the analogy, like, literally, I am trying to pull their gifts out of them. Yeah. Some girls don't even know their gifts. 
they don't even know they're strong. Like, you know, they've got all of these preconceived notions about, you know, everything, <laughs> everything yep. all at once, right? Like everything all at yeah. once, and let out. But I think also it's just helping our young women recognize the fact that you have a talent. Like I let them know, I see a strength in you, right? You know, and I tell them, I was like, you know, there's a lot of women that would kill, you know, to, to look and be as strong as you are, yeah. to want to jump with your vertical or to want to move as flawless as you move, to want to have as much grace. That is your superpower. Like sometimes I don't think we really um, help uh, our women recognize, right? Yeah. Where like, and it's just like you said, feedback, right? Feedback. That's paramount. Um, and mm. I just don't know that we give it enough. Um, I 100% agree. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different. Like, if, if there was a girl who was like, you know, not feeling so good about herself, thinking about quitting, but then she had a coach like you that was like, like you, you were strong. Like, there, you know, people would kill to be able to run like you, like that kind of stuff. Like that would be a, a complete game changer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important for parents and coaches listening. Like, how can you, number one, create those memorable moments, like you said earlier, but number two, like pull people's gifts out of them. And there's this, this mm -hmm. metaphor that I like to use, and it's, you can't read the label from inside the bottle, mm -hmm. right? So when they're in it, it's like, it's hard for them to see, yes. but that's why it takes a coach or a parent or a mentor sometimes to like, show them like how beautiful, read the label to them and show them how <laughs> strong and capable they are. Yep. I love that. I love that. Yeah, no, it's true. So, I mean, I just think that like, you know, I, and I would suffice to say on average, just like in the classroom, like, you know, it's a known fact that guys get called on, you know, like two to three times more than women. Wow. Right. Yeah. You know, who's getting a seat at the table, who's getting to answer all the questions, who's getting all the feedback, right? Who's uh, already got a seat at the table, who's, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> in many ways, you know, who, who have to pass, right? And it's never the most vulnerable people. <laughs> it's, so never, it's never. So I, I don't know. I know that's a long winded answer, but I'm just, you know, pointing out obvious things. Like sometimes mm -hmm. we don't, we forget to take care of these populations and i think um you know and that's why you need people you know the right people in places yeah. um yeah. to really help usher um those kind of concepts through so beautiful okay i got one last big question for you you ready yes okay so when you're working with athletes what is like the number one like lesson that you're trying to impart on them like on your day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, being capable. There you go. I really do. Like, um, uh, I, I think a close second would be blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I just remember that you are capable of anything at this age. When you're in high school, your world, your best everything's in front of you. I tell them. Yeah, you may think that this is dire. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, if this is all you got to worry about, sweet, don't do it. Like, you keep your head up. You focus on your tomorrows, your moments right now, but your tomorrows. And, oh, my gosh, there isn't anything it, you will not be able to achieve. And it, it doesn't matter if it's a squat you know, um, one rep max, you know, it doesn't matter if it's in the animal test, put it, put that effort in, put that effort in because, uh, you'd be, you'd be surprised. Cause I think a lot of students sometimes just won't do the thing or won't even, uh, you know, getting started, I think is the hardest yeah. part of everything. Right. 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 So I think just getting them to start to, you know, to start to think about it, to start that implementation to start wherever they want to go is most important. And then it's just like, I mean, they catch on like wildfire. And once they catch it, you can't kick them out of the white room. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's really cool because like I have students that aren't athletes. They'll show up to the weight room and book the weight room out before our student athletes do. Wow. That's well, cool. 
Yeah, because they have they uh, they understand sometimes the importance where I think sometimes student athletes. This is just one more component. Yeah. Right. This is just one more component. Whereas that student is like, yo, this is a component right here. Like, you know, like, I don't have to think. I could just come in and build my muscle. I know Coach Chris has got me like this. And, you know, and, you know, we bump into the weight room. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember our little dance party in the weight room. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I wish you'd have caught that moment. But we, we have it in here. Um, but yeah, so just understanding. And again, I think that comes back to my mom and come back to something more, you know, just believing, being blessed, but believing in something a little higher than yourself when things get hard is really critical. Yeah. Because if you're doing the work, at some point it's going to get really hard, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And helping them Always. understand that, okay, you got to really understand where the work begins. That, that's really big for me. Because students, they say they want to be D1. They say they want to be the best. But when push comes to shove, oh, I got to go study for this. Oh, I got to go do this with my mom. Oh, I got to do this. I'm like, okay, just understand time management. Right. Because you have signed up for this. And we look at consistency, discipline, you know, um, you know, making sure that you are present in your moments. Like, and And it's important that these match what you are choosing to set your goals on now if we need to recalibrate let's go right happy to sit down with you to do that but you're gonna have to figure it out and it's just a function of time management at the end of the day and just making sure these again fundamental pieces are so important and so just starting with that belief in yourself and that you're capable i tell you it is really 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 i think at the foundation of all those attempts it's just like stepping off the edge you know it's like being vulnerable yeah make it you know make just like eh. <laughs> that like that like fired me up just like it's so it's so simple again like you said but it's just telling people and yourself that you're capable and that's what starts it and then like the whole time management thing you were talking about is like ask yourself the question are my actions aligned with my goals? Yes. If not, let's do some recalibration, like you said, because yeah. you're, yeah. you're going to get off sometimes, but yeah. you always got to come back to what what's like the, the goal, the end goal, my North Star, and am I doing what it takes? Are my actions lining up with that? And that's like yeah. a simple way to look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Amazing. And there's so much good stuff in here, Christy. Um, I'm sure that there's I, I, I want to like be able to share uh, you with with people and we're doing this in, po- in the podcast, obviously, but if there's people that want to connect with you or just mm-hmm. like be like, I want to see what she's all about and like look at mm-hmm. your stuff more, where can they connect with you or reach out to you if they yeah. want to? Well, I'm on Insta, um, Lucky Street Fit One. So Lucky Street Fit One. Um, and then, you know, Central Catholic High School, right on the website directory. You know, Christy Smith Ryan, um, and it's C Ryan at centralcatholic.org. Email me. You can call me directly. Um, <laughs> You're getting all these calls. No, really. I, 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 I <laughs> coaches used to think I was so weird, but I'm like, my phone is always on. I, again, I do. I, I think, I don't know <laughs> what this is, but I just, I love taking the time for people. And I love, like, when a student comes into my office, right, like, I had to learn to put down because yeah. that transaction, that first 10 seconds, that eye contact, first 10 seconds, right, is critical. Like, and the student is, they're, they're always testing, right? They're always testing. Yeah. Like, is this, mm-hmm. is, is this going to, is this going to be a person for me? And some of them don't even care. They're like, nah, Coach Christie's not the person for me. You know, like they all, they, but they never met me. They, they just assume, you know, and then I become the person for them um, until I, you know, become relevant. Uh, at some point, I'm going to become relevant, right? <laughs> it, it really, it just goes, you know, like it's just funny how, you know, students who drop your weightlifting class really appreciate your weightlifting class. Those are the one, those are the wonderful letters that you get. <laughs> for sure. That's like the um, later, um, you know. At the end of the semester, but yeah. I mean, last point I want to draw out that you said was like an example for a parent. When your kid comes up and they want to talk to you, 
can you put down your work, your phone, whatever, to listen to them? Same thing with, you know, girls that are listening. When your friend comes and talks to you, are you giving them the time and attention that they deserve? Yeah. Or are you giving your time and attention to your, your phone, <laughs> for example? I think that's just so important to like going to the grocery store. You know yep. what I mean? Are you texting while you're in the line? Or are you making eye contact with the clerk who's checking your groceries and talking to them? It's just yes. like the simple thing, just like, like, and, and that's what I love about you so much is like your heart is so freaking big. And I can, <laughs> I can feel that across the room, like the gratitude and the love in my heart right now is like, it's just, it's just cool to be able to, to get that energy from you. And I hope people listening, mm -hmm. and I think they will be able to sense that too. And also not just sense it, but be like, man, I want to be more like Christy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, no, I I do really get that a lot. Like I and it and it and it, and it just it, it gives me chills still to this day. Like I I it's about once or twice a year now, but a student would just be like, I want to be a strength coach like you, Coach Christy, and I'm just like, oh, like inside I'm like, oh okay, yeah, just let me know when you're ready. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but it's so I'm like. Ah! Yeah, like let's go. You would make such a great coach. I hope this happens for you. Like I want to help you do this. Um, but I don't know. I just think the conscientiousness, you know, at the end of the day, right? They always say it's a it's a skill, mm -hmm. right? Being conscientious of what's around you, the people in your space. Like you, it, you know, it does like you know take a lot of vulnerability to like open your eyes, you know, and understand uh, the world around you, and you know. And of course, that resilience is that second piece. And, you know, just keep learning to work through your mistakes. And, you know, especially as a coach, you know, it's, yeah. it's um, you know, you really want to see good, positive results. And sometimes you got to get out of your own way and give that control to them. Like my job is to make them think, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, not do it for them. Yeah, no, not do it for them. You know, like, so, you know, helping them you know, understand the importance of this. I can always tell the, them the importance of this, but working with the captains to move that message through is going to, you know, be more beneficial uh, yeah. for me or the leadership, you know, it's going to be more beneficial to me. Um, and so just understanding those structures and systems mm -hmm. and things. Love yeah. it. Well, Christy, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm thinking okay. this probably won't be the first or the last time. Uh, well, it is the first, I guess I should say. It's not going to be the last time yeah. uh, that we have you on because I think there's just so much other stuff that we can dive into. But thanks again uh, for coming on. I appreciate your time, attention, and, and love that, that you exude. Um, so yeah, I appreciate having you on. Yeah, and just let us know when you're back in Portland. Will do. <laughs>